people not only are registered to vote in 1984 and do vote and vote Democratic, and that's the assumption, then we will have a Democratic president in 1984. Is there any effort, uh, you see any efforts to uh, have a coalition between the various minority groups uh, trying to register voters on issues or just to register voters? Are you talking locally? Locally, nationally. Start locally first. Well, locally, we have a coalition. Uh, we, have, uh, we have called press conferences. We have a coalition right now with, with the black community. We, we have a coalition with the Caribbean community. We are in the we are in negotiation process right now with with the um, Indian American community uh, and we will continue that I think that when we look back in terms of Obo's campaign which I was one of the organizers in, in his campaign that was an experience it was a spiritual thing that took place for us there I mean we we felt that we had the hope we had a dream that we could pull together our people the Hispanic and black community worked very, very close in that campaign. And as a result of that, we have now set the pace for what we're going to see in 84. And as Obo said, that was just a, uh, a sort of a message. It's, it's a foretaste of what's going to come. Of what's coming, you know. I guess what I'm really asking also is do you see some effort to coalesce behind a candidate, behind candidates perhaps? Yes. Right now there's a lot, that's one of the things that came off immediately after the, the congressional races was a lot of dialogue is, is taking place and we are talking about not only be getting behind candidates together, we're also talking about consolidating our resources. Um, and also in terms of the technical assistance that we have within the community so that we can come out in slates, that we can work together. So that is happening, yes. Recently, uh, in Time Magazine had a, a piece, uh, a long piece on Jesse Jackson and his possible candidacy. And some black and Hispanic leaders were quoted as saying, uh, not yet because he can't win and he will take away votes from uh, perhaps a Democratic candidate and therefore re-elect the president. Uh, but Mayor Hatcher of Gary and I, I want to quote this because I, and it was from Time. It says, uh, we've finally become convinced not only can we use the ballot box, but we know how to play the game. It's absolutely appalling to me that people now would say to us, don't do it, unquote. Uh, how do you react to that, Orville? First of all, I think that uh, he has all the qualifications to be a candidate for president as, as any other American. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I, and of course, I would not denigrate his character or his reputation. I think he's demonstrated down through the years that he's a capable uh, leader uh, throughout this country. The fact of the matter is he has not announced that he's a candidate. So you really can't focus with any degree of certainty that he is going to be a candidate. Uh, he, he hasn't registered with the Federal Election Commission. I don't know where the funds have been raised. I don't know whether or not he's... Uh, uh, follow with any uh, states so to me it's a moot question at this point uh, we know who has announced and we're, we're choosing sides at this point but I, if Jesse were to announce then I'd have to give it the utmost consideration I'm one of the uh, minority I suppose among democratic chairs around the country I think that a uh, minority candidacy for a president in the democratic side would be very beneficial to the party without endorsing Jesse Jackson or any other person to, to be that candidate and the reason I say that is that uh, Jesse Jackson or any other black will take no votes away from any other Democrat and give them to Ronald Reagan. Uh, everyone will run in the primaries and in the caucuses and somebody will be nominated. And I think that someone, if it say we're not the minority candidate, would be the beneficiary of a, of a large outpouring of, of pre-registered minority voters. And if the minority candidate did get the nomination and ran, more power to him or her. I mean, this is an open country. So I think if someone is qualified to, to run and wants to run, I don't think that these kinds of considerations as to from whom they're taking votes are at all relevant. And I say that again without endorsing Jackson or anyone else, but, but I don't think it's a, I think it's a spurious argument to say that, that a minority, um, uh, a talented minority leader should not run for the presidency for fear of taking votes away from someone. I think that, that more votes will be added to the Democratic column by such a candidacy. Luis? I have no question that Jesse Jackson will possibly run in, 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 in the primaries by just by the recent article in the Times that I was reading and his capability of raising money he's looking at 10 million dollars um, the two top runners uh, in the presidential race right now hope to uh, be able to raise that have not been able to raise that type of money and Jesse Jackson's uh, network will be through the churches and the churches carry a lot of influence we can only see 
positive things happening from that. Now, we have commitments in the city of Milwaukee and the state of Wisconsin to candidates already. Uh, we saw in, in the, pro, in the uh, convention here, Cranston did very well. Uh, and it was as a result of the, um, of the minority vote that put him over. So the question is, is that, will Jesse Jackson's uh, uh, candidacy affect Cranston, which is probably the concern uh, that most minority people would have? Uh, will that then assist Mondale? We, we were still sort of looking and seeing, but I think it's, we would assume, I personally would assume at this point that he would run and then use that to uh, give the black community uh, uh, a, a negotiating point after the primaries. But uh, that would be a benefit to the black community. Uh, on one hand, on the other one, we're looking at, are we seriously thinking about uh, a candidate like Cranston and, and what kinds of... Uh, uh, things would that, uh, how would that affect his campaign, looking back at the convention and, and into the future? At the risk of opening up the uh, Pandora's box on issues, what, what do you see as the issues? Uh, we're going to be having the primary season opens in less than five months. Uh, what are going to be the issues that the American people and minorities and others are going to be looking at? Jobs and peace. I should add uh, freedom. Not freedom from incarceration, but freedom from being trapped in the ghetto, trapped in poverty, trapped in ignorance. Peace because of the exorbitant amount of money that's being spent on uh, military appropriations. $1.6 trillion we will be spent over the next three years. We, will be, we will, are approaching $200 billion deficit right now uh, in this fiscal year. We simply cannot afford that because we're driving interest rates up. The private sector is in competition with the federal government to borrow money. They've, therefore, they cannot expand their places of employment. They can't create new jobs. And as a result, the laypersons and the middle class people are suffering. They're being laid off. Unemployment, while it's coming down, is coming down very slow. Foreclosures, bankruptcies are at record high. So as peace and jobs are tied together and freedom from the ghetto and ignorance and poverty. I think that um, that pretty much hits the nail on the head. I think that the unemployment question, even though it has been reduced to 9.5% nationally, that still means uh, an awful lot of people out of work and many, many families either approaching the end of their unemployment compensation benefits or having exceeded them uh, and in a very uh, precarious economic uh, position. So I think that the unemployment question will be significant. And as far as peace is concerned, I think that Reagan administration policies in Central America, uh, in the Middle East, uh, and elsewhere that have, uh, I think, uh, severely uh, uh, aggravated the prospects of, uh, of war and have uh, uh, certainly uh, jeopardized many of what I believe are our interests around the, the globe. I think those two issues are going to be predominant. Luis, do you agree? I, I agree. I think jobs and peace is, is very key, and um, we're going to have to be looking in terms of what's happening and happening in our foreign affairs and also in, in trade of our economics with the trade and, and, and where we stand on that. But once we, we look, come back down to a more local level, I think people are going to look at the, the type of, of uh, the candidate and look at what kind of commitments can we see as minorities from these individuals in terms of seeing placements in, in the administration that will reflect our needs and our concerns once there. Jesse Jackson talks about forming a, a rainbow coalition of blacks, other minorities, women laborers, uh, peace activists, and the white poor. Does such a coalition have a chance to become reality? You know, uh, there's a congressman from uh, Missouri, William Clay, who made a statement. I don't mean this on a local level, but uh, he said that I have, we should have no permanent enemies, no permanent friends, just permanent interests. And if those people, the various groups, which you would call the rainbow, can come together with a, with a common interest, then certainly it can work. And any uh, dispute, is, I, to me, is transitory. It's, it's temporary. So yes, a rainbow coalition can come into existence, and it, and it probably is needed. The one difficulty with that kind of a coalition, I do agree that it is, it is possible, is that uh, populism or populist candidates have really run the gamut from the right to the left in this country in our history. Uh, Huey Long and George Wallace were also populist candidates who tried to put together coalitions, but deliberately excluding minorities. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone can come along and put together a coalition that would include all Americans who want to join, 
and that does have a tinge of populism, I think it could be uh, not only very helpful, but whether or not that person were nominated, it could guide our party's platform at the convention, and it could mean victory uh, in 1984, but I think it's a very, very tough job. I think that I would change it somewhat in terms of saying not a rainbow coalition, but I think the prism concept to the fact that as, as we can send a beam of light through the prism and it's come, it comes out the other side of rainbow, we also have to be able to come together, as Obo was saying, uh, because of our needs, our necessity brings us together. But yet being able to respect one's another's differences, our cultures, our values, uh, if we can do that, and I believe it can, and I am for one working towards that, uh, we will be, have a successful 84. I, I'm curious about it, how you react to this. Uh, we, uh, during the uh, uh, late 60s and early 70s, uh, the, the civil rights movement was still at its uh, uh, highest moments in this country, and uh, the, the anti-war movement became very strong, and there was a coalition uh, among some of the civil rights leaders and the, the anti-war people. And some say today that that had a lot to do with slowing the uh, direction of the, the civil rights movement. Do you react to that? Well, whether or not it did, is in Revelant at this point. The, the thing that we need to look at is the mentality of minority people today and people in general. We are, it, the joke has always been that minority people are only concerned with affirmative action and civil rights. That's all we seem to be able to in terms of our job placements and once we're in government. Uh, we're concerned with, with uh, nuclear war. We're concerned with, with, with jobs and peace. We're, we're concerned with all the issues that everyone else is. The reality is that we do not have jobs that we do not have quality lives in our community. So we, we address those needs that, and concerns that are closest to us. But if a uh, nuclear bomb was dropped tomorrow, we're going with it too. But the bomb that's always being dropped on us is uh, the prejudice, the, the barriers that are being put in front of us that do not allow us the accessibility to quality lives and our rights. I think, uh, Dave, I think that it's fashionable to say that any new movement that comes along, the women's rights movement in the early 70s, a peace movement, uh, an environmental movement will somehow dilute uh, the civil rights movement uh, as if there was a small universe of energy and it can be dissipated. I think on the contrary that uh, movements of those sorts that have very just causes and excite a, a lot of people to join them, I think they're very beneficial and I think that the, in the aggregate if all of those movements for positive change get together, I think that uh, on balance everyone will profit. I don't think that there's competition for energy. We've been focusing on national issues, and of course those issues are also local ones. How do you see these voter drives uh, affecting local politics, local elections? Well, let me say this. I do believe, first of all, uh, uh, numerically, we will have three black aldermen in 1984, possibly a fourth minority. And that's, what, that's our goal. I don't think that we're going to have any expansion of leadership uh, at the state level. We have three state representatives, one state senator. I, numerically, I don't think that's possible. Uh, I do think that uh, uh, that we will be able to select, outside of our own group, people that we think best represent our needs. I think you, could, you just have the enthusiasm uh, is ex existing as a result of 1982. Uh, but there won't be the great numbers that you have in Alabama, for an example. We have 17 members of the House and three state senators. Uh, the numbers just aren't here right now, but the potential uh, in the future, not in 84, uh, is there. For an example, I can envision, as did uh, the county exec the other day, seeing a mayor, a black mayor, or a minority mayor in the city of Milwaukee before, uh, in my lifetime. I'm sorry to say that uh, we've come to the end of today's program, and on behalf of our audience, I want to thank my guests, Luis Santiago, Matt Flynn, Norval Pitts. And as always, I've enjoyed being your host. I'm Dave Foran, and I invite you to join with us again next month for our program on human rights. Human Rights is produced by the Milwaukee Human Relations Radio Television Council. If you have a topic you'd like to have discussed on this program, please send your suggestion to Human Rights Box 444, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53201. This was a public affairs presentation of WTMJ Incorporated. You're in touch with 94 FM, WKTI Milwaukee. This is how it goes south for the ABC Contemporary Radio Network. The name of the show is Speak.